Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is your boy, Stevie Jobber. And it's your boy, Dangerous Duke. And welcome back to the Dangerous Jobbers podcast, putting wrestling over one podcast at a time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're getting good at this, man. Hell yeah, we should. We're at episode 100. Damn, has it really been 100 already? It doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it. It definitely doesn't, man. I, I tell you, uh, time's flown. It really has. Seriously, we're, we're on year two of this. Yep. But since it's the 100th episode, we figure we're going to kick it off and we are going to have the biggest podcast ever. This is going to be the biggest episode that we've ever done with the most guests that we've ever had on one show. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to do this as smoothly as possible with all of our great guests that we got coming on. I believe we have, I think this is what, there's going to be five or six people appearing on the show at one time? Yeah, I think so. Like at least five, at least five. Damn, we have a lot of stuff to go through with a lot of great people. And we're going to kick it off with our first person. And that person is none other than Bet's Frequency. Welcome to the show, brother. Yo, what's going on, y'all? How y'all doing, man? Chilling good, good. We're, good we just man. had, we have in our 100th episode and we got to have as many panel, as many people on the panel as possible. And we got to have you to kick off the panel, man. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Like I told you, man, I don't think I deserve the opening spot, a little bit of pressure, but nonetheless, congrats on 100, man. That's, that's why we all here. So hey, I'm glad y'all you. made it that far. Appreciate Thank it, you. Man. So. The question or the topic for today's episode is because this is a subject that a lot of people debate on. We've talked about it here and there, but everybody has their own opinions on it. So the main question that we want to get to is, who is the greatest professional wrestler of all time, in your opinion? That's a big question. Um... I take every a lot of things into account like that. Uh, I guess, like, it, overall worker, entertainer, um, they know the moves and when to do them. All time. Man, it's not my personal favorite. I think I'm going to say Shawn Michaels, man. And that's just what I can think of right now. Yeah, I wouldn't. It, like I said, it, to me, whenever we get to split, like, getting in the, to that talk, I split hairs heavily. Like, I think Sean is the best uh, worker as far as a wrestler, but I think Bret Hart is more technical, you know. So, it's to me, all those things kind of go through my head. I think that's always an ever-changing, you know, thing for me of who is the greatest. Because, like, you can't leave Ric Flair out. He could do all of it. He knew the mat skills. He could wrestle his style. You know, he was a great champion. He could entertain, you know. So, like you said, it's everybody has a different take on it. That's for sure. I like yeah. that yours is different from who your favorite wrestler is. Like, you're able to separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who definitely. you feel is at the top for you and who is, in your opinion, just the best at professional wrestling. Right. Well, I mean, that's that goes to the, the point of the question, though, you know, like it's not who's your top five favorite. It's who's the greatest wrestler of all time. And, mm -hmm. you know, I I like if you ask me who's the greatest gimmick, I don't like The Undertaker, but it'd be hard pressed for me to say he's not the greatest gimmick of all time. Right. You know? That I, he is by far one of my least favorite wrestlers because of his gimmick, not because of the man, not because of the moves. I did not like the gimmick, but it's the best gimmick we've ever had. Besides, I would say Sting. You know, mm -hmm. so that's just my my two cents. You know, I can respect that because not a lot of people are able to, like you said, not a lot of people are able to differentiate favorites and the greatest and you're able to even though you don't like a certain thing you personally even if, even though it's not your cup of tea you're still able to acknowledge that it was great during its run for whatever 
I mean, people will respect your opinion more. You, you know, it's not always about being right or wrong. It's about like, is what you're saying doesn't hold any weight? Is it valid? Does it make sense? Like anything like that. And not that I want people to agree or disagree with me, but people would be more uh, likely to hear me out if I'm not always boasting about my f my favorites or anything like that if i'm willing to be like well i'm not the biggest fan of that guy but he did he wasn't a bad guy right there you know like well he's a bi he, you know he's an unbiased person i think that's what a lot of people respect you know yeah because most people if you ask them the greatest wrestler of all time they just automatically go to their favorite like let's say i don't know some people will say chris jericho because he's their favorite some people We'll say Hulk Hogan because he was their favorite at the time, or some younger people right. now will say Jeff, even though Jeff shouldn't be nowhere in the conversation. Whew. You said it, not me, my boy. You said <laughs> that, not me. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I, I agree I, with you, though. I agree with you. I, I can respect that. So you got to go with Shawn Michaels as your greatest of all time, right? That's that's today, right now. I got two brothers asking me right now, and like I said, it could change tomorrow. I'm like, you know what? I was wrong on that. Maybe it's Rick. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm not giving Rick his due. Day. You know, I'm just being I'm being honest. If you mm -hmm. ask me, it's like, what's what's my favorite video game of all time? I don't know right now. I could just give you, you know, this is the one I like to play the most. But this is a more of an unbiased question that I have to answer here. So. Shawn Michaels isn't like one of my favorite favorite wrestlers ever, but I've always appreciated him. He like he checks off that list. The name, mm -hmm. great name, great finishers, great great WrestleMania matches of which most of the time he lost. You know he could he could wrestle. I hear people that despise him say, if you're having a bad match with Shawn Michaels, it is not him, it is you. You know it's it's all the things I hear other wrestlers say and. And fans say over time and how he's been, you know, how his stuff has held up in the ring compared to the 80s or stuff we've even seen now. So it's a it's a collective of a lot of things as well as the moment. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it, for me, I'm going to have to say Sean, man. Y'all got one or do y'all not sign for that? Do y'all I can't know what y'all is. I just carry you. Just carry you. I, I think we can go ahead and give ours. What yeah, you think, yeah, Steve? yeah. We got, we got a lot of – we got a lot of – time all right so we so might as well get guys out the way now yeah so go ahead stevie who's your greatest of all time um oh man uh hard ain't it yeah yeah once you think about it and you have <laughs> that's to be what I'm yeah <laughs> yeah it's it gets a little difficult because um there's a lot of things to consider <sighs> And there's some names you, you want to think of right off the bat, but you don't want to be biased. Like, Kurt Angle comes to mind. <clears throat> but I think, I don't know, I think leaving at a certain time goes into it as well. Mm, good point. I didn't even think of that. Good point. Very good point. But then I can't really say that about Rick. Because Rick is he having a last match as we speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you have to, I guess you have to consider in their peak, who was the greatest. And then you compare peaks to other peaks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to stick with AJ. <sighs> he slipped my mind. The only reason I didn't say him is because his career wasn't over, you know. But yeah. thank you for saying him, bro. Thank you for saying him. Because everybody, like, he's so biased. So, yeah. he's. Thank you for saying him because he deserves to be mentioned. That's why I say that. That's why That's why, That's why. why I try to bring it up as much as I can. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like it's so easy because he wasn't in WWE to write him mm -hmm. off. Yeah. But if you had ever seen him in his prime, and not just when he came to WWE, in his Prime AJ was untouchable. Man. In the sense where yeah. he could be in the ring with Sting, with Kurt, with mm -hmm. whoever you thought the best was at the time. And he would be the most compelling person in the match. And the I way people be on him. Exactly. Yeah. And the way people speak about him is the way people speak about 
Sean and the way people speak about Brett, like you don't have a bad Gosh. match with AJ Styles. If you're having a bad match with AJ, it's your fault. You did something you weren't supposed to do. Because AJ can have a, a good match with damn near anybody. Man, what the saying is a broomstick. Mm-hmm. So I, I gotta I gotta I gotta keep repping strong for AJ because I've hey, just seen too boy. much, you know. Agree. And even to your point, man, those first three, four years in WWE or three years, rather, he was, you know, he was having big matches with Roman and Cena and Dean and Daniel Bryan. And he had the title uh, twice, I believe. He had the, was it the U.S. title once, I think. Mm -hmm. So, like, he's, you know, he still, you know, still did. He still made waves when he got here. Yeah. Does it make you, does it make you laugh when you think of, um, how during those first three years they were saying he's like this generation Shawn Michaels. Yeah. It made me laugh because you think about like, well, he was around <laughs> when right exactly when Shawn Michaels was on that second run and he was actually better, probably. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's funny to hear like how highly they hold him now, even though technically he's not even at peak AJ. But you see, that's WWE though. They have they they acknowledge the stuff that goes on under their lights, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. They gave a little little love to his IWGP thing because they were like only him and Brock Lesnar at the time mm -hmm. were the only U.S. Uh, heavyweight champions they ever had and stuff. But you know, like they tried to fill in other people, but they didn't need to. Like when he came out at the Rumble, Vince knew. Vince knew the same thing that he knows right now with Cody. Mm -hmm. they told you bro we don't need all that gimmicky stuff aj got aj aj is aj man yeah so fully agree with you bro fully agree uh duke what about you man for me it's it's kind of a tough one because there's names that you can go through uh with people that are active and people that aren't active i would say it fluctuates. I would say Eddie, but Eddie, um, Eddie unfortunately passed, so we didn't get to see all of his prime. We, yeah, we mm -hmm. didn't get to see all of Eddie in his prime. If I had to pick one, because it fluctuates, I'm gonna go Kurt, just because when Kurt was in WWE, like he transitioned from the Olympics to WWE, and he was great in WWE, even though he had the injuries. And, you know, the pain pill addiction. Mm -hmm. um, even then, he was still great. And then you take him over to Impact. He was just as great, if not better, in Impact. Granted, when he came back, his second run with WWE wasn't that great. But Kurt's one of those guys that you don't really have a bad match with in his prime. Mm -hmm. Kurt can take Shane McMahon and put on a five-star match. He can work with the lowest of the low and still make them come out great. You figure, look what he did with John Cena and John Cena's I very first match. That. He took he took John Cena and made him a star. Well, not a star, but built him up yeah. a little bit. He established him that night. Yeah, literally. And on opening night, Kurt established him. And that was still, to this day, one of Kurt's best feuds when he feuded with John. Mm. And one of Cena's best matches. Mm-hmm. Like, for, like, before he became who we know he is, the Mr. Invisible Man, like, yeah, that was an important part. Without that, you wouldn't get Undertaker giving John Cena that pat on the back and welcome on the team. And Kurt Angle saying, that's the only dude that's ever blown me up, especially in that amount of time. Like, you wouldn't have all that stuff, you know? So that was very yeah. important, I think, to Cena being Cena. Yeah, so I, for me, I got to go with Kurt. Not mad at it, bro. Can't ever hate on Kurt, man. It's, mm -hmm. it's damn true. He good, boy. Without question. Um, <laughs> so, Fetz, that was the question that we had for you. Thank you for coming on, brother. Before you sign off, let the people know where they can find you at and where they can interact with you. Uh, find me on Instagram and, and YouTube mostly. Uh, I try to stream a few times a week or put out a video once in a while um but yeah you can find me on instagram pretty, pretty much fest frequency on both both of those so 
yeah, that's where y'all can find me, wrestling and all sorts of stuff. You know? And then um, you got the to... witch. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say before I got out here, I actually picked up uh TNA Impact on the PlayStation 3 yesterday. Uh, uh, I'm, installing, I'm installing it right now to test it out, fellas. So that was my wrestling uh, gym I want to leave y'all with for a day. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. And matter of fact, you got the uh, you have a video game channel as well. Tell them tell them a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 trying a few things on YouTube, but it's uh Fets Arcade and um I, I go live where I post up like a guide help or something like that hints on certain games. So I'm gonna be giving more. So I had a lot of personal life stuff going on. The fellas kind of I'm sure Stevie Stevie should know, but I, I know Duke knows for sure. So a lot of stuff going on, but we, I'm, st I'm still there. Uh, I got a, a group of people to hang out with. Uh, Pop the chaos. We do a lot of uh, just kind of games and stuff like a live every week on somebody else's channel. So. That's uh, mostly where you'll catch me for the most part consistent. So, All right. Yeah, well, appreciate that, man. No problem, man. Thank you for being on the show. We're glad to have you. And we can't wait to see everything else you do going forward. Yeah. Thank y'all, man. And congrats again on all y'all success, man. Uh, keep pushing it, bro. Keep pushing it. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. Yeah. No problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Fetch Frequency. And now, your next guest on the show. He's been on before. We've the debated next with him. The show. We know who He's he been. is. The one, the only, the <laughs> champ, the Toy Hunter. What's happening? What is happening? Again, thank you for having me on once again. Yeah, no problem, man. We always got to have you on, especially for the 100th episode. We got to get you and we got to get your opinion because you know how to debate with the best of them. <laughs> uh, all right hit me all right so the topic of discussion for episode 100 is who is the greatest professional wrestler of all time let's get down to it man i'm going with my goat rick flair mm. okay all right that, that's definitely different than the first one so what what makes you say Ric Flair as opposed to anybody else? To me, Ric Flair was one of the first. It's just from just from my perspective, was one of the first wrestlers that I automatically gravitated to. I know some people would say Dusty, some people would say Hogan, some people would say Randy Savage, you know, all these other guys, but for me. Ric Flair, to me, is the be-all, end-all just for what he's done for professional wrestling over the last 30, 40 years. I mean, he 16-time world champion, which, in my opinion, that record should never be broken, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, he... He dominated an entire decade of the 80s. Like, when was the last time you ever, with the, well, you could kind of say Hogan dominated the 90s. You could say Austin. You could say The Rock with the 90s. But as far as, like, the 2000s, you could say Cena. But Ric Flair literally dominated an entire decade. And he had some of the best rivalries through that decade, you got Steamboat, you got Dusty Rhodes, you got uh, Harley Race. You, I mean, how, how, how can you not go against that? Well, well can... tell me this: um, is it is it the the overall impact in wrestling that puts him higher than AJ Styles? Because I remember you being you 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 having a rebuttal for me about the AJ Styles being the greatest wrestler of all time. So <laughs> have the question is it is okay it impact only? What what is it? What is it that makes him better than AJ for you? To me, I, 
I, I will always put Ric Flair at the top, even over AJ, because like I said once before, he dominated an entire decade. Mm -hmm. AJ just had like, he's had some really good runs. Mm -hmm. and, and I will never knock AJ. I think he's he's on on that that road to becoming one of the the, the greatest. But like just from a performance a performance aspect, I, w I will give the edge to Flair because of who he's put over and made main eventers. Mm -hmm. For example, Ric Flair took Sting to a 45-minute draw and made Sting a household name. Mm -hmm. Without Flair, there's no Sting. Mm -hmm. Like AJ, AJ, I don't think has that that one one rival that he's been able to make somebody afterwards right that that's that's mm -hmm. my thing mm -hmm. that's, that's that that's where the aj and, and flair kind of kind of differ i can see so, what you're saying but yeah i, I think i yeah. agree with you too i think as far as um Dang, that's that brings a whole new consideration into 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 who's the greatest of all time. I never took that element into it. I will say this about AJ. I think he's one of the best high flyers of all time. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree. I will, I will say that about AJ. I think he's one of the best high flyers of all time. But just oh just from an overall perspective, I got to go Flair. Mm -hmm. Flair's my guy. I can, I can agree. I didn't. Well, how do I say? It? I didn't think about it as far as you did, but I can say Flair is definitely one of those people that was probably the first guy who transcended his sport that became more than his sports. AJ mm -hmm. never really became more than wrestling. AJ was just always wrestling. Mm -hmm. Flair was one of them people who, yeah, he was arguably one of the greatest of all time in the ring. And that transcended outside of the sport, too. Like, people now are doing it. Like, Rock and now Cena. Not many people can transcend their sport. Flair is one of them people that were able to transcend it and go more than just wrestling. You figure how many and, people now are making songs about him. Yeah. And, and another thing about Flair, he, in, like, his earlier days uh, during his run in the NWA, WCW, like, during the 80s, he lived his gimmick. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. All right. I can, I can respect that. You, you definitely gave more of a reason to your goat than I did for mine, but I'm still going to stick by my goat. <laughs> but but I, I, will, he... I will agree. Flair is definitely more of a goat out like in and outside than my guy was, but I'm still saying my guy's the greatest of all time in the ring. Well, I think he brings in an interesting aspect we didn't consider. I, yeah. I, I always, I, you know, taking in all these different elements of uh, in, inside the ring, outside the ring, on the mic. I never took into consideration how how someone has impacted someone else's career rather than how great their career is on its own. Flair has mm -hmm. made a lot of... That makes you reconsider. That that actually makes a stronger point for uh, uh, me bringing up Triple H. I try not to include him in these conversations because I feel like it's, it's, it's a biased opinion. But when you consider who's made more people, Triple H's stock kind of rises there. It, it kinda I was going to say the same thing for Kurt. Kurt's kind of rises too. That's true. That's true, because Kurt made John. Kurt made quite a few people, too, especially in, over in Impact. He made quite a few stars over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with Duke about Kurt Angle. Like, when he went to Impact, he... And it was cool to see him work with AJ, Joe, you know, all those guys. And, like, to me, I think he made... Samoa Joe, a 
the there's just the character alone. He's already a great wrestler, but just the character alone. Mm-hmm. He made the Samoa Joe character better and the the match quality was was just a hundred percent better. Mm-hmm. Because you gotta think a lot of times when you are a new guy coming over, i.e. AJ coming to WWE, you know, in a way you kinda sort you kinda sort of fantasy book, but you don't know what kind of chemistry he's gonna have. He's gonna have with these guys in the ring. So and that's one of the that that's one of the feuds that everybody talks about when you think of Samoa Joe feuds. You talk about the Kurt Angle one, and that was Kurt right out the gate. As soon as he gets the impact, he's got Samoa Joe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and and with them, those two, I think they were, I think their styles were a lot alike. It's just Joe's a little bit more hard hitting, mm-hmm. and we don't. I I think we as fans don't give. Samoa Joe credit for being as technical of a wrestler. Yeah, Kurt was able to showcase the ability that most people, that he didn't show with most people. Exactly. Because, I mean, like, we all know Joe was this 290, you know, 90-pound beast that can that can go. I mean, I'm, my favorite Samoa Joe match is the unbreakable pay per view with uh, him, AJ, and uh, Christopher Daniels. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. That that three way was like for me the first the first time I ever seen Joe like really go. Cause like I I didn't I didn't start I didn't start really watching Samoa Joe until he came to Impact, but then I went back and watched his Ring of Honor stuff, and it's like. Okay. This dude's actually great. Yeah. So. Yeah, but that's cool. You 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 made us you made us had to recalibrate a little bit on our arguments for greatest of all time. Yeah, it puts things in a different perspective when you think about it like that. This is this is why we have to have you on the show, man. <laughs> Thanks. So, so 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 far we have a nice little list compiled. We have D with Flair. We have Fetz with Sean, mm-hmm. me with Kurt, and Stevie with AJ. I can't wait to see what everybody else has in store. Mm-hmm. Definitely interesting. That is a good list, though. Man. Makes you think, right? It makes you think. Yeah. Now now I got to... Luckily, thank, thank God for Peacock. Uh-huh. Hey, right. <laughs> Thank God for Peacock. So it's like, well, let me go and watch some of their their greatest matches because I I have no problem sitting and watching like flare matches all day. Mm-hmm. I also think that's a, a very key component as well when you're talking about the greatest wrestler ever. I feel like whoever you name has to be somebody who you can watch any match of theirs on any given night. And be thoroughly entertained. Like they have to be somebody that doesn't fail on a random watch back. They have to have a number of matches that you can just want to watch every now and then. Cause I mean, really, with that list, you can pinpoint certain matches that you can go back and you know, go back and watch. For example, my favorite. Kurt Angle match is a uh, Kurt Angle Chris Benoit at WrestleMania 17. Mm-hmm. The ultimate sum- was it the ultimate submission. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They put on yeah. that. Yeah. that. Oh my god. Yes. Great match. Uh, AJ, like I said, you can go back and watch Unbra- Unbreakable or 06, or you can go back and watch the first Cena AJ match at at SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Sean, where where do I even begin with him? Yeah, you just take your pick, pick a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really it's it's pick an era. Do you watch Rocker Sean? Do you That's watch true. like I see title Sean, or do you watch main event Sean? Mm-hmm. 
for me, my bias is always is always um, SummerSlam uh, 2002, but that's, that's selfishly less about Sean <laughs> and more about Triple H's great character. So, I mean, yeah, it's it really with our, just that list, you can just pick and choose. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So. Well, D, thank you for coming on the show, dropping your knowledge, dropping your opinions. Before you Appreciate log brothers. off, let the people know where they can find you, where they can interact with you. Well, you can always find me on Instagram, D the Toy Hunter underscore one. Uh, if you want to watch a grown man spend money on wrestling figures, you can catch me on YouTube. <laughs> <You just wonder. laughs> uh, and you can find me on TikTok at Data Toy Hunter as well. So, Got you. D, as always, man, thank you for coming on. We're going to wind up having you back again. You already know. Oh, of course. All right. Well, take care, brother. Hope you have a blessed one. And... Stay dangerous, man. You already know. Always, man. Salute. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Congrats on 100 episodes. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, you man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, D the Toy Hunter, for being on the show. Our next guest that we have, we got a special on this one. We got a two for one coming all the way from Canada. <laughs> We've been trying to get him on the show, and we finally got them. The one, the only, Johnny Funko and D of a kind. Hey. Yay! <laughs> hey there. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, guys. Glad to have you. Um, I was on your show, so I felt like it was only right that I got to have you guys on our show. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that would be, that's awesome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. that. No problem. No problem. So before we dive into this question, because it's going to be a pretty loaded question, I just got to ask you guys, let the people know a little bit about yourselves and what it is you guys do. So uh, we do a podcast slash interview. We interview a whole bunch of different people. We get to know a whole bunch of people, what they're into. Um, What's their interests, what their dislikes, their likes, um, all sorts of people. We've had Funkos. Um, we're gonna might possibly have a voice actor coming up. Yeah, we have TikTokers. We have everybody. Other YouTubers, other podcasters. Yeah, anybody who catches our eye. Yeah, the right way. We Just, have them on. Uh, yeah, anybody who's uh, got whatever they're interested in. We're into all sorts of uh, different occupations or interests and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, whatever catches their eye, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Um. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we're just going to dive right in because for our biggest episode, we got to ask an important question because everybody has a different opinion on this. So who do you guys think is the greatest wrestler of all time? Go ahead. You, no, you go first. I think <laughs> what I think Stone Cold Steve Austin, I think he shaped a lot of wrestling. Like the way he changed everything that he like broke the rules he um he messed with the mcmahons all the time it, it was just the way he presented himself was great like just brought a lot to wrestling okay all right and um i kind of struggled with this question a little bit um but after a lot of uh, deep thoughts uh, i'm gonna say black china um, I like a lot of the female wrestlers, but she takes the cake. I mean, she did change wrestling um, for the better. I mean, she even fought other guys in the ring, too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, like, she was a super strong, uh, influential figure. Um, and, yeah, like, I kind of look up to her a little bit. It, it was kind of sad that, like, RIP to her, she struggled with addiction and all that. But, um she was just an amazing entertainer and an amazing wrestler. So I, I think she definitely would be someone that I would pick. Mm. That's it. We got Those, a first girl. Yeah, that's pretty okay, interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a great pick, though. Yeah. China's a great pick, though. She yeah. did okay. change the game. Oh, you do agree? Yeah. Austin's a great pick, too, though. I don't want to shy away from that. Austin is, is, is Austin, you know. There's so many yeah. people we wouldn't have. 
Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. And uh, yeah, Austin, yeah. he's doing right now. He's doing a podcast, right? Yeah. And he's yeah. still up to his old games with mm-hmm. the drinking on the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty interesting. So far, we've gotten a lot of. We haven't gotten a repeat uh, a repeat person so far. Oh, so no, far. Okay. Like, yeah, like yeah. so far, Stevie has AJ Styles. I okay. have Kurt Angle. Yeah. Uh, Sean Michaels made it. Okay. Ric Flair made it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now you said Stone Cold and you said China. So, so far, we're getting a lot of different questions. We're getting a lot of different answers across the board. Yeah. Lots of good picks, I'd say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so I got to just ask real quick, Johnny, because you said Stone Cold, right? Mm-hmm. What, what makes you pick Stone Cold as opposed to some of the other people that were just named on the list? I think Stone Cold, uh, um, when I used to watch him when I was a young boy, it kind of like stuck out to me. Like I wanted to be a rebel. I wanted to be a badass, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and okay. just, he, he connected with me in a, a personal level and another level, you know? All right. So, it, so it's kind of like it's, somebody that made you tune into wrestling when you were younger that kind of stuck with you throughout everybody else that's come after him. Right. Okay. And D, D, I kind of got to ask you the same question. You, you picked China. China was a great pick. Um, as opposed to any of the other female talent that have, you know, been before or after there really hasn't been anyone quite like her. So is there any other, like, specific things that you can think of that made you pick China as opposed to, I don't know, like a Charlotte or a Becky or even a yeah. Trish or Alita? Yeah, like she, she's an older diva. I actually didn't know much about China. I kind of started with wrestling as if you guys know me and Johnny talk about it sometimes. I, I grew up, didn't grow up with wrestling. So I didn't know about the older divas and some of the older, actually the guys too. But yeah, like she's just an overall like empowering woman. And uh, like she had strength beyond anything I've seen. She is definitely just different from the other girls. Like all the other girls, I do believe they have a special talent too. But she just, something about her stuck out in my mind when I saw her in some of the older clips and stuff like that, right? And not only that, I actually did see her before wrestling in... Uh, one of the shows uh third rock from the sun and she's great as an like as an actor in other aspects of her life so she just seems multi-talented you know what i mean Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i just liked and she had some humor to her as well so i just really resonated with her for sure all right i can i can respect that answer though the way you broke it down, I can respect that answer. I, I'll give you props for China. Yeah, she was definitely she was definitely larger than life, man. Yeah, yeah, many in aspects. so many different ways. Austin too. Um, yeah. he just he changed it for a lot of people. Him fighting Mike Tyson and Vince and all the uh, crazy revolutionary stuff he did. So great picks, guys. Thank yeah. you. So that was the loaded question of who's the greatest wrestler of all time. Johnny and Dee, thank you for being on the show. We love having you. Oh, thank um, you, us. That was awesome. Before yeah. you guys log off, okay. I, I just want you guys to just let the people know where they can find you and where they can interact with you and all types of social media and all that other stuff. Uh, you can connect to my channel, Johnny Funko. Uh, that's where we uh, do the podcasts. Then for D is, you can say it. Uh, well, okay, so I got my channel, which uh, it's not as uh, active because I got to work on it. But if you're interested in what I'm doing over there, um, it's uh, D of a Kind uh, uh, on YouTube. And then on Instagram, if you just want to get a hold of me and be like, hey, look at this cool picture. Or, Did you know about this wrestler? Do you know this match coming up or something, anything you want? Um, it's also D of a Kind on Instagram as well. And then for my Instagram, it's Johnny Funko 30 uh, because I'll be turning 30 soon. <laughs> um, and then for my Instagram, it's mostly just my collection. Like I'm just showing off what I get uh, every week. Yeah. So that's, that's it. Oh, yeah. And I post really cool pictures of food sometimes too, whatever I'm yeah. cooking. 
Oh, you're gonna say you're you're gonna say that in the midst of me being hungry. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, but guys, thank you for being on the show. Hopefully, sometime soon we get to have you back on and dive into wrestling a little bit further. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. My I can't pleasure to be on. This was really fun. I I get to be on the other side of the interview for a while. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but all right, guys, guys, take care. We'll we'll have you on soon and have a great one. Yeah, lots of love. Thanks, guys. Bye. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, for our next guest, we have a man who knows way, way, way too much about wrestling knowledge, probably more than myself and Stevie Jobber, but we had to have him on. We had to get his two cents in on this. The godfather of the arcade fan, the one, the only, RK Pop, what's going on, bro? What is good, brothers? What is good? Not much, man. Chilling, chilling. Thank you for being on the show, bro. Anytime, my man. Anytime. All right. Well, before we dive on into this, uh, we just wanted to ask you, man, let the people know what it is that you do as far as the content you make and the things that you do. All right. So we started... Um, doing um arcade games at first so we started doing arcade games at first um i was having back surgery or whatever and then they wanted me to be more active the better way to be active is how to do it play arcade games man and then funko came in because i was winning so much tickets that the funkos were you know out there for you know to take so there we go here goes funko problems so once I started Funkos, I, st um, I started doing uh, WWE figures, WWE cards, then straightened myself out to Pokemon. Now we're on WWE 2K22, which <laughs> that game is great. Actually, that's one of the best games that came out since WCW versus NWO, guys. Straight up. And uh, my channel, man, we all about love, man. We have love, we share love, and by all means, we give. If we don't do that, then we don't have a channel. Mm -hmm. I tell everybody every day, if it ain't about y'all, if, if it ain't because of you guys, I wouldn't be here right now. So there it is. Awesome, awesome, man. And because of people like you, we wouldn't be here. So that's always awesome to see and see what you do and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to dive right in with the hard-hitting questions. We asked this to all our previous guests. We got different answers from everybody, so we're going to ask you the same thing. Who is the greatest professional wrestler of all time, in your opinion? Oh. Oh, Jesus. It's a long list. It's a long list. Uh, I was born in the 80s, and in the 80s was when wrestling was the shit. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm going to go old school Undertaker throwback. Uh, not the new stuff that he does. You know, he used to do when before he retired. All the old stuff. Guaranteed. Always always a, a good time when you watch the Undertaker, especially in his um, casket matches and buried alive matches and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He is one of those superstars that run that – that matches all the way to, hey, I ain't got no more. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, The Undertaker on that one. All right. That's pretty interesting. Uh, again, we got – I think that's first Undertaker, yeah. Yeah, that's the first Undertaker. We've gotten somebody different for every person. So what, ma what made you go with Undertaker as opposed to somebody like a Ric Flair and AJ Styles, something like that? All right. Um – um, I'll go with The Undertaker because he is a non-quitter. He does not quit anything. Mm -hmm. He goes, once you start that match, he gets injured, anything happens, he's going to finish that match. Period. No matter what. Um, also, his uh, the way he treats his fans are A1. You know what I mean? He always shows respect to his fans. He'll stop. He'll say hello. I, I don't seen a couple, you know, these big-time wrestlers, you know, skip their fans. Like, you know, their fans don't matter. 
And that's where they mess up at because the fans do matter. The fans is what makes you. So, yeah. I go, yeah. He he He's uh, top of the line with fan base. Uh, he's uh, the best wrestler by far. I don't, in real life, I don't think nobody can beat this man. <laughs> in real life. But, mm-hmm. but, you know, it's a show, so, you know, it is what it is. But, okay. yeah. Got you. And, and you're saying earlier Undertaker as opposed to later Undertaker. Mm-hmm. I mean, earlier Undertaker was where he was at his tippy top best. Mm. He made the best matches, bro. Like, remember that uh, Undertaker versus Mankind match, Hell in a Cell? Mm-hmm. Hell of a match. They fought through and through, and none of them gave up. Dude even lost his pee, uh, tooth and everything. He's eating mm-hmm. care. He steady was in there. He was going. They went hard on that match. That should be one of the best matches in the world. Period. Yeah, certainly one of the most replayed ones. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel about Biker Taker? Biker Taker, man, look, man. He had to change his, his stilo because it was getting old. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Every time he changes because the style was getting a little too old for the fans. Now, if the fans would have just kept him as regular taker, he would have been regular taker the whole time. He wouldn't have changed at all. In one of his interviews, he said, I, I, I'd rather have been Undertaker from way back than I am right now. Mm. Because it was more action for him. It was more of a suspense. He's more of a, a, a gothic person than, you know, saying a biker dude. You feel what I'm saying? That's 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 the way I see that. I respect that. I, I think I think back then he was a little more athletic too. He wasn't. You figure when he was Dead Man Taker in like oh five oh six, he was what already ten years in, twelve years in, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he had a, he wasn't as nimble as he was back in, you know, the mid nineties and what have you. Right. Right. Later eighties. Exactly. Exactly. So I can, I can I can respect that answer. I can that that's pretty commendable. So so far, who is it we have? We got Kurt, we got AJ, we got Rick, we have China. Stone Cold was in there. Stone Cold. Now we got Taker. All right, so we got a good little list so far. Okay. Somebody picked China, huh? <laughs> yeah, it had to be a girl then. China. Y- yeah, you want to take China? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, D of a kind was the one to pick China. Definitely, definitely, definitely. That sounds yeah. like a D pick, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> now, if you would have said tag teams, man, you know there were so many of those. The Legion of Doom will be that top, that top notch mm. with the tag teams. Oh man, we are gonna have to do a tag team episode then because I, I think we are gonna have some different tag teams as That'd well. That'd have been an interesting top ten. Yeah, mm-hmm. think about the greatest tag team. Yep. All right. Well, that was the question we have for you, RK. Thank you for being on the show. Before you sign off, let the people know where they can find you on all the platforms that you're on. All right. Well, you can find me on YouTube, of course, at RK Pop. Also, you can find me at the RK Family on Facebook. You can, uh, if you guys are content creators and want to, you know, get some shout outs and everything like that, you can do that at the RK Family uh, page on Facebook. You can drop your links. Your videos, whatever you want to put on there, there's no holes bar at that uh, Facebook page. I do whatever content you throw out. That's what we. That's what you can put in. Um, also, you can find me at uh, Instagram at rk.pop.2020. Uh, I've been doing giveaways here and there on the channel, so you guys want to be alert. Uh, if you guys are subscribers, you guys are automatically uh, already in it. So once I tell you guys to hey. Hashtag RK Family Tool. Somebody's video, hurry up and run over there and uh, get, get get yourself entered, man. Yeah, and make sure you catch out them live streams that he does for the WWE pay-per-views because he does them almost every, if not every pay-per-view. Yeah, and we're going to start doing AEW as well. Gotcha. So I know, I know we got a lot of AEW fans. I'm just starting to be a fan myself. I just started recently watching older AEW uh, last week so we can get caught up. That way, you know, so when we do our lives for AEW, everybody is fresh and everybody knows what they're talking about. So, Sounds like a plan. Well, 
again, RK, thank you for being on the show. We can't wait to have you back soon. No problem, man. Thank you so much, Stevie. Uh, Dangerous Driver, y'all be blessed, be safe, and I hope this podcast goes up there, man, because y'all deserve that. Heck yeah. Thank you, man. We appreciate it. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have hit the main event of the podcast. Now, this guy that we're having on, it's been a long time coming. We've been clamoring for him. We've been trying to figure out how to get him on, and we finally made it happen. We finally got it in fruition. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Bobby Rassels. What's going on, man? Hey, hey, it's such a pleasure being on the show, man. Definitely had to get back on the show. I'm here. Yeah, we needed to have you back. We're glad we can get you. So before we get started, man, let the people know who you are, what it is you do, and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm Bobby Rassels, and along with my co-host, Mia Moore, um, we, we host the All About Wrestling podcast. Uh, we can be found on all platforms, well, mainly video on YouTube, um, but we are on social media, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and we're on Twitter. So the All About Wrestling podcast, and we have a website, allaboutwrestling.net. And we just do weekly shows. We do weekly shows, either Sunday or Monday nights live. Um, so, you know, if, if you guys can make it, um, you know, if you this information, get in the show with us, talk wrestling. That's what we do. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for being on the show, man. We needed to get you back on here. We had to get you for episode 100. And the topic for episode 100 is, in your opinion, who do you think is the greatest wrestler of all time? Mm. So I think uh, with that question, I immediately think it's easy. Um, but I also want to say that this question can be subjective based on uh, our timelines. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, people that are probably newer to wrestling, they're still dealing with wrestlers' careers that are still going on and maybe 10, year, 10 years from now, you know, whoever the, the greatest wrestler of all time might be somebody different. Um, but for me, I grew up in the eighties. Um, I still watch wrestling to this day. In my opinion, and, and this is subjective and it's objective because the accolades are just crazy. I have to go with Michael Hickenbottom, AKA Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And uh, the reason why, uh, the accolades. Um, he has 11, if I'm correct, 11 uh, match of the years. He's got two match of the decades. One that includes with The Undertaker. Um, he's a, let's see, three-time Intercontinental Champion. He's a six-time World Champion. He's the first ever Grand Slam Champion. He's the fourth ever Triple Crown, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Triple Crown Champion. Mm. Um, and it's crazy. You got to headline WrestleMania. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get a little bit, um, you know, I, I'm a little bit very uh, 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 what is it, speculative of WWE. We all know that. Um, but I try to be as objective as possible and to be the greatest wrestler of all time. You got to headline WrestleMania. And he's headlined WrestleMania um, probably 10 times. Um, so. I have to give it to him because he not only transitioned from tag team, he's a great tag team, and I believe he's a six-time tag team champion. Um, I think twice with the Rockers, once with the Rockers, and then I think five times with Diesel or Kevin Nash, whatever you want to call him. Um, but yeah, I got to go with Shawn Michaels. In-ring in -ring ability, charisma, the whole package. I think he's definitely had probably some of the greatest highlights in wrestling history um, from the Shelton Benjamin super kick to the Undertaker matches. Uh, there's always some legendary spot in Sean's career. That's like highly regarded as one of the best wrestling moments in, uh, in history. I agree with you. Um, and, I, and I can think back, you know, when I think of Shawn Michaels, I remember being a kid and watching him throw Marty Jannetty through a barbershop window that's a, a iconic moment in wrestling history. And then in my opinion, every single match that I said, you know what? That had to be the greatest match of all time. 
I compare that to the Iron Man match between him and Bret the Hitman Hart. Mm-hmm. Classic. First of its kind to wrestle for an hour straight. And um, not just an hour straight, but the, the amount of, of energy and passion that they put into that match to go a whole hour um, and lay it all out on the line. No one deep down, they didn't really like each other anyway. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, the main reason for the match was to put it on for the fans and the show, look, I'm the best. No, I'm the best. It was, in my opinion, that's probably the, the arguably the greatest match of all time. Yeah, that, that, that's a pretty cool way of looking at it. And like you said, Sean, he headlined multiple WrestleManias. And most of those WrestleManias that he headlined, he lost. But he still managed to put on amazing matches with the people that he had him with. Mm-hmm. And he's also, he's more of an innovator than people realize. Like, look at the ladder match with Razor Ramon. Yeah. How many, how many ladder match, how many people are considered innovators of the ladder match? You got the Dudleys, you got Edge and Christian, the Hardys. Sean and Razor put on one of the best ladder matches of all time. And that's an iconic match in and of itself because of everything that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, still to this day, too. You go back and watch it. It's, it's just as entertaining. Not even because of what they're doing, because nowadays what they've been, what they did then has been done before, but just the story they told is so. So great. Uh, do you agree that anyone that has to be considered the best of all time has to be one of those people that uh, people say you've had your best match with them? Uh, I don't think so. Um, do you mean like, it, it, you know, if I'm in the wrestling world, I have actually have to have that match with that person? Is that what you mean? Uh, no, I mean like, when you're regarded when people talk about you in history they always go that's somebody i've had my my best match with like people who said that about brett about sean about aj that they just elevate you to a different level do you think that's a certain requirement you have to have i think so i think um i think that the ability to actually bring more out of a person that you're wrestling um and we may have seen this a lot of times in history, um, just the chemistry, the ability to actually wrestle any single person and make them better, that's a gift. Um, you know, because some people, they can't adapt. You have to be able to adapt to the other person's, um, I guess, wrestling style. And that takes a certain level of IQ. And it also takes humility to actually humble yourself down um, whether the person is better than you or worse, you know, in your opinion. Um, you know, if, if they're not as good as you and then you adapt and you make them look amazing, that's outstanding. It's, it's, and I think, I think, you know, when other legends can actually sit and say, you know what, like, you know, I consider this person the greatest wrestler of all time. That's huge. Just speak volumes because you actually have that other person that's, that's battle tested and they've been there and they have that experience. And for them to say that, I think that's huge. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with that. It, it takes a lot, especially especially considering Sean, when he's worked with people that were good in the ring but weren't exactly on his level of stature and stability in the company, just while he was there, like you said, um, somebody said Shelton Benjamin was Mm -hmm. a highlight, the the Shelton Benjamin super kick. Shelton was a great wrestler, but he wasn't at the level of popularity or the height of Sean, and they still put on a great match. And then Sean's also had the matches, even his later matches, when Ric Flair wasn't able to carry himself as he could have in the in the '90s and whatnot. And he they still put on a great WrestleMania match. Even his very last match at what was it, um, the Crown Jewel match. Sean had a it wasn't a great match, but Sean still carried that entire match because everybody was getting hurt. Mm-hmm. So that that that's a pretty that's a pretty good way of looking at it. I think you're the, you might be the second per. this might be the first time that somebody, that we have a double answer because somebody else says Shawn Michaels too, but you actually elaborated and you actually went further in depth of why Shawn Michaels would probably be the greatest. Yeah, I, I just think like, um, you have to believe you're the greatest too. And I think that does it for, um, make someone the greatest of all time. You have to believe it um, to your core. And I'm being objective here because there's some things that Sean did that I did not like at all. Like when he squashed Vader 
kicked mm-hmm. him in the head during that match. I did not like that at all. Um, but objectively, looking overall in terms of from his beginning to his end, um, he always believed in himself 100%. He believed he was better than the bigger, you know, the biggest wrestler they had. You know, he was, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm better than you. You know what I mean? And um, that speaks volumes. Um, and, and I think it pushes that person to actually be the best. Um, you have to believe it. You can't have no doubts. And he always had that chip on his shoulder. And I think that's what helped propel him to that level. Yeah, that's that's a pretty unique way of looking at it. So, you know, Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I'll let you close out. I was just going to say, no. it's, it's funny the way you described it. Um, it made me think of him being like the original brass ring. <laughs> the yeah. original guy to grab it. I, th- that's what I was going to say. That I'm, this is why I'm so glad we, we co-host together because you <laughs> mentioned the brass ring. So do you think, since you said Sean's the greatest and you know what, you kind of inching me towards believing you and siding with you. Do you think anybody can reach the accolades or hit the brass ring that Sean did in the future? Like, do you think anybody now or in the future will be able to reach the heights that Sean did? I think there has to be the right circumstances. And I say that respectfully because um, there's a list of other people that I have and, I, and I'll name them in a bit. But what people fail to realize is that Sean's always been a member of the clique. Mm-hmm. When you have people that rule the wrestling world, they're able to put you in a position to shine. Um, everybody doesn't have that. In fact, some uh, one person on my list may never ever um, be close to being an associate of those people just because they just choose not to wrestle for WWE um, ever. Um, and that's Kenny Omega. Mm-hmm. Um, but Shawn Michaels, the circumstances were right. He came in at the right time. In terms of his tag team ability, he was ahead of his time, which is why he broke up with Marty Jannetty. They saw something in him. And I kind of see shades of that with um, Street Profits. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Montez Ford. Mm-hmm. And he just got a, a huge uh, bump from The Rock, you know, saying, you know, I see greatness in him. I see it too. I, the, his entering ability is off the charts. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's in the right place at the right time right now. Um, but I think it's all about timing. Kurt Angle, um, I think his career was too short. Um, of course, he had that serious injury. Um, and he was going through a lot of stuff, um, you know, with, with pain and pain, um, I guess, pain, medicating and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I see Kurt Angle, Kenny Omega. Um, those are the two up the top of my head um, in terms of having that. They got that chip, you know, they got that, they believe that they're the best 100%. And you got to have that attitude and you can't have no fear. Shawn Michaels never had fear. Um, he wasn't always the biggest guy, but he didn't have any fear. Um, so, I mean, and then some arguably can say Owen Hart. Owen Hart was in the shadow of Brett, but I really feel like he was going too soon. And I think we would have seen him reach levels you know, and be an innovator in ways that, you know, we probably can't imagine after we will never see it. Um, you know, you look back, it's kind of parallel to uh, Shawn Michaels. He started out tag team. Um, he started out as part of the stable, actually. And, you know, he broke off into a single thing. He was going and going, and, and then he, he lost him. Um, so it's a different time. I'm pretty sure if you talk to somebody that was born in the 90s or, you know, later, they don't, they never experienced that. They didn't experience that. They got to go back to the old tapes and they'll look at it and say, you know what, what is this? This is garbage. It's fuzzy. The commentary sucks. You know, so it, it's really subjective. But I think you got to take all of the objective elements in terms of accolades, character, ability. And for me, Sean Michaels should have it all total package. Yeah. Well, this has been episode 100. Thank you for coming on the show, Bobby. We really appreciate it. Before we sign off, let the people know, again, where they can find you and where they can interact with you. 
All right, so Bobby Rassel's here, co-host for the All About Wrestling podcast. You can find us Sundays or Mondays on YouTube Live. We usually go live around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And to you guys, thanks for having me. Congratulations. 100 episodes is a milestone, which I hope to reach one day. So I will say keep it going, um, and I'll come back. And you guys come back to the show. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. Thank you for coming. Well, guys, that concludes this episode. Thank you for tuning in. You guys know how you can find us. You can reach us at Dangerous Jobbers Podcast on all platforms. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you guys stay up. Make sure you stay blessed. And as always, stay dangerous. Stay dangerous.